In this session, we will discuss dataset creation within DHIS2. We will start by reviewing and translating elements of a paper form to DHIS2. We will then introduce the Dataset Management app. This is where we create datasets in DHIS2. We will discuss some of the fields that are required to create a dataset and create default and section-based datasets. We will go over examples of these during the demonstration. We will show you how to assign these datasets to organization units, as well as the process of assigning these to a user role. Let's go ahead and get started with the session. In this demonstration, we will show you how to create datasets within DHIS2. We will create an example of this syndromic surveillance data collection form in DHIS2. We have been using this as an example to create our data elements and have also used it several times to demonstrate some concepts in the data collection session. On this form, there are a couple of characteristics that we have not discussed. While we have already created the data elements, we have not discussed the other fields that are available on this form. At the top, we have an area where we can write down the health facility name. This indicates this particular data collection form is collected at the health facility level. We also have spaces to put in the week beginning and week ending dates. This indicates that this form is collected on a weekly schedule. These are important characteristics when defining our data collection forms, as this may indicate our organization unit level, which the dataset is being collected, as well as the period in which the dataset is being collected. We have to make sure that we are defining these parameters when we are creating datasets within DHIS2. Let's go back into DHIS2 and see how we have translated these characteristics over into DHIS2. Back in DHIS2, we can see that in order to select the syndromic surveillance dataset, we need to select an organization unit at the health facility level. If I go up and select a district, we can see that I cannot select the syndromic surveillance dataset for data entry. If I select a facility, however, we can then select the dataset. We also see how the period has translated over into DHIS2. As this dataset is collected weekly, we can see that the periods are weeks within DHIS2 as well. We can also see we have a very simple dataset that has been created within DHIS2. The type of dataset that we see here is called a default dataset. All we have done is added the data elements to the dataset and allowed DHIS2 to create the dataset for us. Let's go through an example of how we might create this dataset using the data elements we've created in the previous demonstrations. We're now back in the DHIS2 system where we initially created our data elements. In order to create the new dataset, we'll click on Apps and search for the dataset application. When we want to create a new dataset, we click on the plus icon located in the bottom corner. You can see that there are quite a few fields that are available when we create a new dataset. Let us go through a couple of these fields now. The name of the dataset is fairly self-explanatory. We can also give the short name of the dataset if required. Just like the other metadata objects that we have created in DHIS2, we can also assign the dataset a code and provide it with a description. We then start getting into some new fields. Expiry days is the number of days after the period that you have defined in which users can enter data into the dataset. For example, if I select weekly as my dataset and I select expiry days as seven, this means that I can only enter data up to seven days after the end of the previous week. We'll go through an example of this and demonstrate this concept later on. We can also define open future periods for data entry. As another example, let's say that I'm entering population data once a year. In DHIS2, 
you can only enter data for a period that has been completed unless you define a future period. So if it is currently 2016, I cannot do this unless 2016 is over. However, I might want to enter my population estimates at the very beginning of the year. In this case, I could have a future period of one. This would allow me to enter data for the next year, even before the period is completed. We can also define the number of days in which this data set qualifies for timely submission. In the reporting rates demonstration, we showed that we can calculate the number of timely reports that have been submitted. The timeliness of those reports is defined in this particular field. If I indicate that 15 days is the days after the period to qualify for a timely submission for this particular data set, and this data set is monthly, the data set must be submitted within 15 days of the next month in order for it to contribute to being timely within DHIS2. The period type is the period of data collection for this particular data set. The period type defines how often this data is entered into DHIS2. This corresponds with how often this form is collected through your health system. In our example, we identified the syndromic surveillance form is being collected on a weekly basis. We'll define this period type later on. Underneath the period type, we have a number of other fields. Category combination, notification recipients, data approval workflow, legends, and a number of additional checkboxes that we can select. These fields will be described in more detail during the Customization Academy. Just like we did for data elements, we will leave the category combination blank. Category combination is a mandatory field, but in our examples, we will just leave it as none. We also have to add in the individual data elements to our data set. We then have some additional fields to add in the category option combinations for data export and the attribute option combination for data export. We can also add indicators to be displayed on this data set. Lastly, we have to assign the data set to organization units. We created organization units at the beginning of this module. Now we can go through the process of assigning the dataset to the proper organization units that we have created. Let's go back to the top and start this process of creating this dataset. First we will enter a name for the dataset. We can also enter a short name if required, and enter a code and a description. In this first example, we will leave the expiry days as zero. By leaving it as zero, this means that users can enter data into this data set indefinitely. There is no period of time in which the data entry will be blocked for the user. We will come back and change this parameter and see its effect later on. We will also leave the open future periods for data entry as zero. And we will leave the days after period to qualify for timely submission as 15. We will change some of these parameters and review their effect later on. At the beginning of this session, we identified that the period type of this data set is weekly. So let us change the period type to weekly. The remaining options we will leave for now. At the bottom, we have to select the data elements that are associated with the data set. In this case, we can just assign all six of these data elements to our data set. After we have filled in those fields and assigned the data elements to our data set, we have to assign the data set to organization units.
In this case, I want to assign this data set to my lowest level organization units. I can either expand the tree and individually click on all of my organization units, or I can assign it to my organization unit level. In this case, I want to assign it to the lowest level, which is level 4. After I select the organization unit level, I'll click on Select. It will now select all of those organization units that are at the facility level. After I've assigned this data set to organization units, I can go ahead and click on Save. Now the new data set has been created. The last step is to assign this data set to a user role. We have not discussed user roles in a lot of detail. As we do not discuss user management in a lot of detail in this fundamentals level course, you will not be responsible for assigning the data set to a user role during your exercises. This will happen automatically in the background. We will however show you the full process so you can refer to it later on. In order to finish this example, I must go to my user role in the Users app, I will select User Role. I will then select the User Role and click on Edit. Finally, I will assign the data set to that particular User Role. After I've done this, I will click on Save. As mentioned earlier, we won't ask you to edit the User Role in your examples. After I've assigned this data set to my user role, I can navigate to data entry. We can see in data entry that the organization units that I have created earlier appear. I can select any one of the facilities and then select the data set. You can see the syndromic surveillance data set that I've just created is available. After I select the data set, I proceed to select my period. You can see that weekly period types appear in the period selection. This is based on the period type that we have assigned the data set earlier. We can see after we select the period, the data set appears. This is automatically generated by DHIS2 after we have assigned those data elements to the data set. We can also review some of the other characteristics that we define when we created this data set. If we look at the periods, we can see that we cannot select any period past week 46. This is because week 46 is the most recent week that has been completed. Week 47 is not available because I do not have the option to select from any other future periods. We can define this when we create our data set.